Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to give you a little kind of overview of how I design my enamel pins and a lot of the information that I have learned throughout this process of how to create enamel pin and order an enamel pin. Um, it was quite a lot of research that went into it when I was um, trying to get into the enamel pin market. So I'm just going to share some of my thoughts and what I've learned with you. And then at the end of the this little video slash vlog, I'm going to unbox some of the Patreon rewards. This video is going to show me creating the pin that is part of the February rewards for this month. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and show you the other rewards that are going out with patreon this month so if you're not interested in how i design a enamel pin and how that process works um, you can skip to the end just to see what the rewards are for this month okay so the very first thing that i do is i sketch an idea out in my sketchbook um, i usually have some kind of idea of what i'm going to be making before i start sketching and I kind of go from there and then I usually will kind of plan the colors that I'm going to be using um, for that pin just using whatever art supplies that I have laying around. In this particular case I used uh, Copic markers to kind of color it in. It's not exactly what I have in my brain but it's close enough and I can see how the colors all work together. Um, then I usually take a picture of the sketch in my sketchbook and bring it into a drawing app. I make the sketch transparent, like I um, I lower the, or raise the transparency of it, I should say, so that it's very faint, and then I can draw over it with more precise lines. When you are designing an enamel pin, you certainly can draw it by hand and send a picture of that into your manufacturer. Um, but it's not going to be as accurate. They're going to have to, they're basically going to have to draw it for you um, digitally so that they can then use that to create your pin. Um, so if possible, it is definitely best to draw your pin digitally. Um, the apps that I know of that where you can do that are Procreate, which is what I'm using here. There's also Adobe Fresco, um, Adobe Illustrator and then Photoshop are all some digital places where you could uh, design your pin to send to your manufacturers. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're drawing your pin idea, um, getting it ready to send off to a manufacturer is that you may want to make sure your lines are closed. So the way that enamel pins are created is they have a plating material, which is the metal, and you can choose the color of the metal when you are ordering. Um, for instance, this one is gold. I chose gold metal for this one. And so that is going to be raised. All of these lines that I'm drawing, these black lines, are going to be the raised gold metal. And then they have to go in with enamel and fill in those um, shapes with the enamel. And uh, if your lines aren't closed, you can't differentiate between two colors because they're going to bleed into each other. So you gotta make sure all of your lines for where a specific color is going to be are closed. Um, you have a complete shape there that they can fill in with the enamel. Um, you really wanna make sure that you're using solid flat colors. You can't do shading and stuff when you're designing an enamel pin because they just can't do it. I mean, they're filling it with one single flat color in each shape on your pin. Um, so you can't do any kind of gradients or anything like that. You can go in and screen print on top of the enamel after they have filled it. That is an additional cost. Um, I have done that a few times because when I draw like a animal or a girl, um, and I want them to have cute rosy cheeks. I, I don't want to have a metal line with a circle for where their cheek is going to be, if that makes sense. So instead I have that kind of oval cheek blush shape uh, screen printed on top of the enamel. Um, so that is an option if you need to have a, a different color but you don't want to draw a line for it. Um, and then my other advice is just to try and keep your design as simple as possible. 
the more detailed it is, the more likely you're going to have mistakes when you receive your pin because it's just the more details there are, the harder it is to fill those areas in with enamel. Um, a couple of things to avoid is you don't want too many lines, especially thin lines. Like I said, it just makes it way more difficult for your manufacturer to make. They might even just reject it, your design altogether. Um, like I said, keep it simple. And then when you're drawing lines outside of the shape, like for instance, like if with my little circle here and I've got the flowers going on, um, if you draw outside of that circle and your lines are too thin, they're not going, they're going to have to find, they're going to have to add metal to attach that to the design. Otherwise it will break off and it will make your design look wonky. Um, the leaves that are kind of coming off the design are thick enough that they're not going to break off and they can be a part of the design. But if you're drawing like just a twig or something that's sticking out there, um, they're not going to be able to do that. So keep that in mind when you are designing your pin as well. All of the pins that I do are hard enamel just because I prefer the look. They looked more polished. Um, they look more like a piece of jewelry. Um, there's also the option to do soft enamel and in, in that case the enamel is recessed. It's not flush with the metal plating and um, it's uh, not as hardy, not as scratch resistant. Um, but those are cheaper. Soft enamel is definitely cheaper than hard enamel pins. And then, um, like I mentioned previously, you can choose what kind of metal plating you want. So the standard are gold, silver, black, or rose gold, but um, they do have, there are some other specialized options that you can choose on depending on the manufacturer. You could also include um, glitter in your enamel, like they will add glitter to the um, enamel color for certain spots, and it usually they charge you an extra fee per color that you're adding glitter to. Um, I have done glitter before. I love the way that glitter looks, but one thing I've noticed with glitter is it tends to, it has a lot higher rate of getting messed up, like pins that I receive. The glitter, I mean, there's just a lot more of a chance that something else gets mixed in with it, like some little black spots or something. Um, and then you, and then when it dries and hardens, and then I receive it on my end, there'll be like a big black piece of the glitter that stands out um i don't know what causes that to happen but every single time i've ordered glitter in my enamel pins i'll have at least 10 or so pins that um, have a problem like that so i kind of tend to avoid glitter at this point just because i don't want to deal with bad pins there are two ways of um, finding a manufacturer for your pins there's what's called a middleman someone that you submit your design to and then um, they help you with the process of choosing your options and how much it's going to be and how many you're going to order and all of that they'll help you with all of that and then they um, get it manufactured on your behalf they send it off to a factory the factory sends them the pins and then they send the pins to you um, it is more expensive to do it this way, um, but it is kind of nice to be able to communicate with um, someone who uh, operates out of the United States or UK. Um, I'm sure there's other uh, middlemen companies in other countries as well, but the ones that I know of are, I'm gonna list them here. These are the middlemen companies that I know of. There's Zap Creatives, Pin Game Strong, Made by Cooper, Galaxy Design Squad, Stodry Emblems, Wizard Pins, and Night Owls. Um, these are great for beginners because you're not going to have to communicate directly with a factory. Most pin factories, if not all, are located in China. Um, so, you're, so if you do not want to go the middleman route and you want to go directly to the manufacturer, then you would want to get on a site like Alibaba. Um, or AliExpress and reach out to some pin manufacturers there. Um, I do recommend on Facebook, there are two pin groups that I know of that are really good. In particular, one call, is called Pin Manufacturer Review. PMR is their acronym, Pin Manufacturer Review. And people go on there and they have a whole list of the different manufacturers that people have tried um, in China or through Alibaba. 
and then they rate them and tell them what their say what their experience was like, what the process was like, how many pins they received that were unusable, all of that kind of good stuff. Um, so that's a good way to do some research on that. Uh, it's definitely cheaper to go directly to the manufacturer to get your enamel pins made. I have done that before as well. Um, but I actually, even though I am familiar with working with manufacturers through Alibaba and other um, websites, I prefer to use a middleman even though it's a little bit more expensive because it's just easier to communicate through them um, what it is that you need and if you have any problems, they're able to, they take care of that for you um, instead of you having to advocate for yourself. Um, with the manufacturer, they do they take care of all of that for you. Um, so that's why I prefer to use a middleman. Um, I haven't used all of the ones that I listed, so I'm not endorsing them per se. I'm just giving you a list of options to make it a little easier uh, to figure out where to start. So once I've drawn my pin and added the colors in, um, I actually pull out my um, Pantone color booklet so that I can give my manufacturer exact Pantone colors. Enamel pin manufacturing, I'm almost 100% sure everyone uses the Pantone colors for color picking and color mixing. So you are going to need to know the Pantone codes of the colors that you're using to provide to your manufacturer so they get the colors correctly. They can guess, they can try and figure out on their own, um, but it may not come out looking the way that you had envisioned. Um, so if you are planning on making multiple enamel pin designs, I would recommend getting the Pantone color booklet. It is very expensive. I don't know why it's so expensive, but um, it is worth it if you, are, if you are planning on getting into enamel pin manufacturing um, for you know the foreseeable future. Um, so I go through and I just match as best I can the color, the CMYK colors I've chosen on my iPad to Pantone colors. I make a little chart of which colors are supposed to be what, and I write down what m the metal plating is supposed to be, so what the black lines represent for the metal plating, and then I send the file off to my manufacturer, and then they create a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They create like a template of what your pin is going to look like. They, their artists on their end, um, you tweak it however they need to tweak it to make sure that it's actually something that they can make. They send it a proof to you to be approved. You approve the proof and then, and you know, pay the fee and then they will start manufacturing your pin. One thing to keep in mind is that um, the more pins you order, the less, they, the less the price usually is per pin. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, so I sent this off to my manufacturer and then I wait several weeks and they ship me my pins. So here is what the final pin looks like. They turned out beautifully. I got these ones a little bit larger than I normally do um, just because I wanted to be able to see all of the details in the pin and I'm really excited about this. This is going to be a reward this month for the Tiger tier on my Patreon, you know, and above people that receive the Tiger tier rewards will be getting this pin uh, this month. All right, guys, this is it for voiceover me. I'm going to go ahead and show you the Patreon rewards for this month, um, and I'll use them in a journaling layout just to kind of show you one way that you could use the rewards. And um, I really absolutely love the theme this month. It was so perfect for February, just kind of a self-pep talk, self-motivation, a little bit of self-love, which we all could use a little bit more of, I think. And I just want you to know that I hope that you are having a good week and just know that you are enough and I will talk to you soon.